Good to go, Mr. Director. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us. I, uh, fortunately for you, cannot see you, uh, but I appreciate you listening. I will uh, try to keep this succinct. We hope to keep this meeting to the hour and a half that we've scheduled it. Um, but if you notice a whole bunch of smiling faces over here, it's because something happened, the clouds parted, uh, light has dawned on Marblehead, a whole bunch of stuff has happened in our favor. So now we have to figure out how to take advantage of it and um, really get going forward. So our plan here is to very simply uh, go through some of what these changes are. And we're gonna use the, the technical language that we've been presented with. And then um, at the end, we're gonna kind of summarize what it all means for all of us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Hunter, do you wanna do a really quick overview of, of where we stand in terms of relationship to this is what we think is going to happen, um, but the final step is still the Plymouth Board of Health and that kind of stuff. Do you want to give us two seconds on that, and then I'll go into the slides? Yeah, I think it ties into this slide right here, if I may. I'll just cover this one, and we'll move Perfect. on from there. Sure. Um, so to Mark's point, we received some revised guidance uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and, and quite frankly, just very recently from the CDC. Um, but here's how it works. So the, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issues uh, recommendations and guidance. Um, their guidance is secondary to the, the local authority of the, each individual state. Um, but their overall recommendations, and, and frankly, the Boy Scouts of America as a national organization is using their guidelines um, as an organizational approach to handling the, the COVID requirements in each state. Um, then the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which has the authority to make determinations for how we in the Commonwealth are required to respond to the COVID mitigation, um, how that works, right? So on, on uh, May 29th, guidance that was issued last week takes effect um, and it applies to uh, different sectors and, and there's uh, specific guidance um, in different areas. Um, but it changed fundamentally the way that uh, we are allowed to operate uh, in a camp environment for the summer, which is what we're excited to share with you today. Um, and also they, they announced that the state of emergency will end on June 15th, which shifts a lot of the authority from the, the governor and the command center back to the state's Department of Public Health so that the Department of Public Health no longer has to go through the command center. It, it goes back to their autonomous um, decision making. Um, so from there, the Mayflower Council takes all of the guidance from the Boy Scouts of America, the requirements of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the general guidance for, from the CDC. Um, and we prepare you know, our approach to how we're gonna do business and uh, meet all of the different facets of guidance. Um, but ultimately, the local enforcement agency for all of the guidance is the local town Department of Public Health or Board of Health um, where a camp is located. Um, so when we are doing anything at Squanto, it has to be approved by the Department of Public Health in the town of Plymouth. Um, so we are still working through, because the guidance came out less than a week ago, all of the, the different facets of that approval. And um, basically, I know that was more than two seconds, but that shows you the complexity and the hierarchy of how all of this guidance is formed and then all of the steps that we have to take in order to make sure that it gets approved. Um, but I think that paints a, a, the picture for you know how we come by the guidance that is issued and why, in some cases, something we do at Squanto may be different than what we're able to do at Resolute. So uh, thank you, Hunter, because what I was hopeful is exactly what you did. So we can look at what the CDC said and said, okay, they said everything goes. And then we can look at what the governor says and said, great, everything goes. But the reality is that there are more governing bodies involved. So we're going we're gonna to go through where we are right now. Uh, there's, there's nothing that says that other things might, might change between now and June 15th. I have no idea, but the progress we're making now is so positive that it, it's time to start getting excited again. So can we go to the next slide, please? So um, since that that last April meeting, when we all left thinking we needed a drink, um, the cohort limit has been rescinded. 
So you can bring your entire troop. Um, they are defined by the, the campsite, not just by your units. So if there's a couple of uh, units in a campsite, you're gonna function as a cohort. Um, the gathering limits are rescinded and emergency shelter social distancing is uh, reduced to three feet as opposed to six feet. Uh, what we were working with prior was the idea that if there is a lightning storm and I have to call the entire camp in, how many people can I get into a safe place with six feet of social distancing? And that number based on the buildings we have in camp uh, was somewhere north of 210 people. Um, given that that number, the six feet has now been cut to three feet, I'm no mathematician, but that now doubles where we were and we're in better shape. And um, we can actually go back to normal Squano numbers. Um, so we don't have those weekly attendance limits. Uh, we can now start talking about camp-wide programming again. So uh, one of the things that I was uh, sneakily really disappointed about was the whole loss of the bonfire to open and, and close. Um, the reason I would call it sneakily is that I have crippling stage fright and the idea of standing up there and starting a song is beyond the pale for me and I'm freaking out thinking about it now. But that notwithstanding, um, we can now bring everybody together. If it's a smaller week, we, we distance the units in the amphitheater with a row between them. If it's a bigger week, then we do it out on the camper field with, with half barrels as the fire, and we just do it by spacing out the cohorts. So we can do these things. The parade field is now back in play because the parade field is distanced automatically. There's feet between all of the units. So we can make this work. Um, we're not gonna require people to behave early quarantine, um, but we're asking people to use common sense and um, especially given the, the, the spread of the vaccine and the number of people that are getting the full vaccination and what, it's a, what effect it's having on the possible infections and all the other stuff that comes as a result, that gives us a lot more flexibility and opens up a lot more for us. Um, Hunter, I'm, I'm just gonna go until you tell me you have something to say. Does that work for you? All right, cool. So a um, couple of things. I, we're gonna try the, the, a staggered check-in on Sunday just because of the additional um, questions that might be have to be answered by people regarding um, COVID. Uh, if we have any, any, any kind of issue at all, I'd like to have a little bit of flexibility where we're not piled up in the parking lot as we normally are. So we're gonna take advantage of the camp refill and we'll let you know how this all works during the Monday meetings. But the troops are gonna come in at a staggered time. It'll allow us a lot more flexibility and make it, I hope, a lot easier for people to come in. We are still gonna allow people to bring their trailers in early and park their trailers in their campsite and all the stuff we normally do. But the official check-in of the entire unit is gonna be at a staggered time frame. And one of the things that we have going on down the road uh, we'll, we'll make that even more apparent as to how easy it'll make it. Um, anybody who is not vaccinated will need um, to have a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of arrival. Uh, and then our testing will be based on symptoms. So if you're asymptomatic, we're not, we're not gonna be testing everybody without symptoms. If there are symptoms presence, present, we will do what we would do anyway for any other disease or any other infection, we're gonna test people and see where we're at. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna take attestation forms that are gonna be signed and collected, and everybody entering camp will be required to go wash their hands when they get to the campsite because that's just good hygiene anyway, and it's an easy way to, to start the routine. Good, thank you. Okay, so the next thing. Now, one of the big challenges that we all heard about um, and if I keep kept the emails, it would be stunning the number I got. Um, we are going to be able to swap leaders in and out. So that, that challenge, that overwhelming challenge, and believe me, we all knew what that looked like. That overwhelming challenge has been, re been removed. And as it stands today, we're gonna use Wednesday as a swap out day. So if you have people willing to come in for a couple of days, Sunday to Wednesday, Wednesday to Saturday. Um, at this point, that's the best we can do um, because we cannot have visitors coming in out of camp. 
We can't have uh, leaders come in on Monday, leave Tuesday, come back Wednesday. It, it just, that doesn't do us any good. We're trying to get to the point where for the one week that we're in camp, Squano is its own cohort, Squano is its own bubble. Um, and we're trying not to bring extra people in. So that's kind of how we're looking at this. And given the sheer number of um, people who are vaccinated in the adult um, population, I think it works in our behavior. So. Uh, scout leaders are not really going to be coming and going from Camp Willy-Nilly. However, if we uh, we will be trying to open up the um, climbing at the quarries um, on Friday morning, uh, that tradition, because that's going from site to site, intermixing with people that we know are taking precautions and are vaccinated and then coming back. Um, people will, not know, will no longer need to be wearing masks outside. Uh, social distancing between cohorts is reduced to three feet. And we're going to reopen the the merit badge program the way we would normally see it. So merit badges are going to be bigger again. There's a couple there that we have to figure out, uh, and that may end up being a no on, but we'll talk about those specifics in a minute. Um, however, the vast majority of the badges that we had planned to offer, the ones that came out in the Leaders' Guard in March, are going to be back on. Uh, we're going to have to figure out how to do the rest of it. So. If we have an individual presents with symptoms, um, the unit will need to engage in modified quarantine until we can figure out what this what the spread looks like. All those who have been in close contact with an individual must engage in this modified quarantining, and then we'll do symptomatic testing in camp. You know, somebody getting a fever does not mean they have COVID. Somebody having a stomach ache does not necessarily mean they have COVID. Um, there are things that are are dead giveaways, but the reality is that if they come to camp with a negative test, the chances of them starting something midweek is going to be smaller than I think uh, what we were previously uh, concerned about. And given the guidance on what kids are now being allowed to do, I think we're in good shape. Um, negative test results will allow everything to go back to normal. Uh, positive test results, we are required to, to contact the Plymouth Board of Health, the Massachusetts Board of Health, and they'll tell us what to do. But we have protocols in, in mind. We have safety ways to do this. Obviously, the parents will be contacted immediately. Um, and one of the senior staff will be designated as our um, COVID expert. Um, it's not allowed to be me or the medical director. So there will be a third member of the senior staff who's involved in this as well. So that's more guidance and more people involved who can have eyes on the situation. But. Uh, given the way the numbers are dropping, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is a non-issue for us, but we have to be prepared for the worst. We're doing the best we can. And then, you know, somebody said to me once, over uh, under promise and over deliver. I don't know who that was, probably a lot of people, but somebody on this call might have said it recently to me. So uh, can we go to the next one? So um, for the first time, given that we are starting camp so late, uh, we are going to take advantage of the four weekends in June uh, for registration for your pre-camp swim test. So you'll bring your, your whoever's coming to camp uh, for $5 a person. We're going to have a team of lifeguards, including our waterfront director at Squano, uh, all of the Saturdays in June from 9 to 3. And they're going to conduct troop swim tests. So no worry about Christian's law because it's not just a like body of water. It is the body of water. And we'll literally try to get people done with that. So when they come back, um, that's not an issue they have to do on Sunday. We will not issue buddy tags that day because giving a, an 11, 12, 13 year old a buddy tag is we just may as well make three of them because they're going to be gone by the time they leave the parking lot. So we'll keep, keep a record of them, create the buddy tags, and give them out when they show up their first day. Um, so that is currently available on the Mayflower Council website. I would recommend if anybody wants to take advantage of this that they get out there and look for the best time and date that works for them. Uh, we are still working on setting them up at Camp Resolute for a couple of Saturdays. It, in all likelihood, it will be the, the third and fourth Saturdays in June that Resolute is available. Um, once we have this set up, that registration um, will be open and those swim tests will count for Squanto because it is a like body of water. So, but if you're closer to Resolute than Squanto, um, as somebody has said to me recently, as much as they love Miles Standish Forest, driving there from 
wherever is a bit of a haul. So five dollars a person, come on in, you know, let's do this, get it out of the way, and then you can move on. So basic checklist, complete your registration, pull pay in full. Uh, every, make sure that everybody has a uh, completed AHMR. Um, so that's the medical form. Uh, Part C must be signed by a physician. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, and my wife is a nurse who tells me this is nuts, but this is beyond our control. This is not something anybody on this call can overturn, change, and make go away. Um, I don't know how, how else to say it. I, I think it's nuts, but that's not me. Um, and I have limited power, as we all know. Um, please come to camp with the completed shooting sports waiver and talent release and hand sanitizer release and all that other stuff. Um, we're going to be doing, because we can't have visitors, we'll do the Monday meeting virtually, um, which means I can't feed you, more's the pity. However, um, it will be a step towards normalcy. Once you're in camp, we'll do the Scoutmaster meetings and we'll do that kind of stuff. Uh, coffee with the, the, you know, the coffee club, but we can't do that with the visitor rules as it stands today. Um, and everybody coming to camp is going to have to do a Corey story. Uh, but you knew that already. That's not going to be a surprise. Um, please continue to monitor the, the council website and, and electronic news paper, uh, newsletter because, you know what, things could change and get even better. But we don't know today. Uh, we're just excited that things have gotten better. I mean, the smile on my face the last couple of days, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, we have been fired up and it's time to go. So I'm um, hopeful that you all come along for the ride. Um, join the crazy train. Okay. Hunter, please. Uh, okay, so to summarize it all, um, if we start with a baseline of this is what Squanner looks like for, for camp, here are the things that are going to look different. A, there's going to be a, um, a staggered arrival time on Sunday. You know what, if it fails miserably this year, we won't do it again, but it might make things easier for the future. Um, social distancing between cohorts will be three feet at all times. What this essentially means is if you've got four people from your troop who want to take uh, the cooking merit badge, when they're in the cooking merit badge area, they'll be, we'll, they'll be working four feet away from four scouts from another troop taking the same badge. They're just, they're going to be doing the merit badge thing. And ironically enough, um, if you look at teenage behavior, they all sit with their friends anyway. So they're not going to be crossing over anyway. But um, we're going to we're going to do our best to keep them socially distanced. Just we have to play the game. We have to do this the right way. Uh, dining will be outside, so the kids will come in, get their food, just go through the normal line, and then we've got picnic tables all over the pine grove. We've got the, the porches, and we can put a whole bunch of people on those tables three feet apart and we'll be fine. Um, so the Monday night camper uh, pre-camp meeting will be uh, held virtually. Adult leaders are going to swap out on Wednesday. We'll have uh, people in the office for that purpose. Um, and that will also include the Corey and Sorry forms. Um, we're not going to be doing STEM indoors. Um, that's just a place we can't go right now. Um, so whatever STEM badges we offer, and this is part of the change we were talking about, I, I spoke, I referred to earlier, is the STEM badges that we can offer are going to be dictated by what we can offer outside. So if we put up a, a carport or something over the backside of that building and we can get people outside, then maybe we can offer similar badges. But I don't think we can do all the ones that we normally do in STEM. So we might have to cut that short and I'll have to have that conversation with my STEM director separately. Um, similarly speaking, the only other time they're really inside is in the dining hall. The rest of the time, they're out and around and doing their thing. So I'm not overly concerned about the impact on uh, the, in the program building part we'll have. However, um, where it stands, where this is going to make an impact is on the um, life-saving and BSA guard. Because those badges, as it stands right now, involve so much face-to-face -face interaction, one-on-one -on -one time with differing people between the lifeguards and the instructor and the individual people. At this point, we're still working out if we can do that. I don't know that we can. Um, I'm, I'm going to set the expectation right now that it's probably not going to happen. 
uh, but we are trying. Um, we're going to continue to try to make it work. Uh, if my waterfront director turns around and says, hey, I've got a way to do this, then we'll do it. Um, but as it stands today, I don't know that we're going to be able to offer those. Um, any any symptoms that show up, uh, Dave Colbert will be in the office. We know what to do. We're going to count on you folks that, you know, if a kid gets a fever, it could be dehydration. It could be a, It could be anything. So let's just find out what's going on first before we before we pull the COVID bell. We'll have the ability to test them on the spot. We'll do what we can, and we'll play the game by the rules. Um, we can't have visitors, so uh, I've been told not having parents wandering around camp on Apache Relay night is a blessing for a new camp director, so I'm going to assume that that person wasn't lying to me when they told me that. Um, as much as I look forward to having the excitement of all the parents there and seeing their kids and kids showing off and all that stuff, uh, that's going to have to be tabled for a year. And um, everything else we've already covered. If there's a case of medical necessity or somebody has a doctor's appointment or they have to leave and come back, we will make that work. But it's not going to be, you know, I'm going to take the entire troop out to Erickson's for ice cream. We can't just do that kind of stuff. What our intent is once you're in Squanto, Squanto becomes a cohort, one big bubbled cohort. And we only let in the people that we're required to let in because they're swapping in and out. So that's the basic idea. Um, Hunter, is there anything I've left off? No, I think I think you've covered everything uh, so far uh, that we had the outline here, Mark. Okay. So Jack, um, I'm going to ask a silly question, but are there any questions? See you, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I don't see any questions here so far, though I did receive a question offline, and that was whether or not the slides will be made available. So just like our uh, April update, we will make the recording presentation of the slides available on our website. It'll be a couple days. Uh, but the information will be there and we will, in addition to these materials, we're also going to send out all the appropriate links. So the link to the annual health medical record and the attestation form and all the links to the appropriate sites on the Mayflower Council. Um, we'll consolidate all those in an email blast um, so that you have that information packaged nicely together. Go for it. Very good. And I'm, I've been shown now that, yes, there are a few questions there, so I apologize. They're showing on one screen and not on another. So I love technology when it works, but um, if you're me, it doesn't often work. So uh, can scouts and leaders still swim test on arrival? Yes. Mm, we're going to make this like that. I love those. We're going to make this real simple. Yeah. Um, so there's a question here, Mark, about showing the most recent merit badge schedule because there are multiple versions circulating. How yeah. do we want to distribute that information? I'm going to, we're going to attempt to have that live and available. Um, I'm going to, I have been reviewing the, bat, the list from March and with the exception of the ones that we talked about earlier, I'm going to try to have those live in the next couple of days. I, I can't put a deadline on it because there is a, a little bit of coding that has to go on to getting that up on Black Pug. So I, I don't want to say by Thursday because I don't know if by Thursday is going to happen. But if you take a look at the original list back in March that we put out and take out life saving and BSA guard and um, I'm trying to think of what STEM badges might be removed, uh, game design or programming, stuff like that. Other than those four or five badges, I think everything else is going to be where it sits right now. Awesome. Um, so will there be a Flight to Eagle program in some form? Uh, we are saying yes at this time um, because the plan is that the Flight to Eagle director depending on the number of kids, obviously is going to have them in smaller groups anyway, and we'll just group them with the kids from their own troops. So yes, I'm going to say yes. Will you accept provisional scouts? Um, Hunter, will we accept provisional scouts? 
if we can staff that, yes, because they're going to be treated just like any other unit. Yeah, that's right. They're going to be their own cohort group. Yep, I just have to figure out which 21-year-old uh, or where we can get somebody to staff that. But we can work on that. So the answer is yes. Um, we'll just have to we'll work around figuring out how to do it. Is there a limit on adults with each unit? Um, I don't know. I would say that I would like I would want to limit the the longhouse residency to you know realistic how we can keep people three feet apart. Um, even though in all likelihood all the adults are going to be vaccinated. Within the longhouse, I think anything more than two or three people would get clunky. So more adults can come, but they might have to bring their own tent. Does that sound fair to you? I would say, yeah, we've got the ability to accommodate them in every other way. So yep. we're welcome. You're welcome. Down down with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how long a process will it be for the swim test? Um, my waterfront director will tell you that it depends on the number of scouts, obviously. But she's booking them out to take a half an hour, 45 minutes each group. Perfect. By the way, is anybody else noticing how much more fun it is to say, yes, we can do things rather than no, we can't do things? I mean, I'm literally, my leg is bouncing. I'm having a ball saying, yes, this is, wow. This is, this is unlike parenting or teaching. This is actually fun. <laughs> uh, what happens um, to the dining operation outdoors if the weather is inclement? Uh, if it looks like we're going to have a bad day, we'll stagger arrival in the dining hall and then just run shifts on the porches. But it's never going to rain on Squano. There's a Squano bubble. What happens if units are unable to attend any of the pre-camp swim checks before they arrive? So just take it when they get there. So the big thing here is if we have 20 troops coming to camp, and we all know what that looks like at the waterfront that first day. If we can take eight of them out of the need to do it that day and then space out the rest of them, everything gets easier. The, you know, the med line gets easier. Everything gets easier. There's more time spent in the campsite getting, getting the gateway set up and the theme night and all that stuff. Because it's back. We can now do theme night. We're going to have the nice little round table and all that other stuff. We can go, go, go. Uh, so a troop can come to camp and yes. all the members can take different merit badges, is that correct? Yes, they can. But when they're in the merit badge class, they're going to be sitting with the members of their troop who are in that class. And they'll, to, our, to the best of our ability, be separated from other troops, members of that class. Are tents single occupancy or will scouts and or leaders be uh, paired up? Uh, the, we're going back to the normal double occupancy. There's, there's distance between them. They're not sleeping with masks on. There's airflow through the tents. We're fine. As far as the adults are concerned, um, I think what we talked about with the uh, longhouses is the key. I think whatever pe that particular troop is comfortable with, two to three people in the longhouse is the norm anyway. And then you, other people are in tents outside. I think that's up to the troop. Um, I would ask that, you know, we don't put five or six people in a longhouse, but I don't think that ever is really a concern to begin with. But the scouts are going to be two to a tent, which now means we can increase our capacity within each campsite. You mentioned that life-saving may not be offered due to COVID restrictions. Uh, besides that, in BSA Guard, are there any other waterfront badges that will be similarly affected? Not that I can think of. Swimming is done um, by group. They go and do the swimming badge. They can, boating is going to be done the same way it was before. Um, so I would say that, no, I would assume that everything else is back to normal. The, the mile swim is an individual thing anyway. So if we're going to do that kind of stuff, we'll do it that way. Will there be an Apache relay? Yes. We just have to make sure that they're not, and they're not anyway. It's an individual troop thing, and as they're operating in a cohort, outside of the starting line where they're standing there for 10 seconds, yeah, let's do it. Um, can we confirm that each troop is one cohort and that there are no limits on numbers? We can confirm that each troop 
that each campsite is a cohort. So if there is, you know, if you visualize Comanche and there's a troop of 12 in one side of and a troop of eight in the other, that group of 20 scouts is a cohort and they can work together. Um, unless they don't get along, in which case we probably shouldn't put them in the campsite anyway, but that's a different argument. Um, but no, each campsite is a cohort, each troop, if they take over a whole campsite, they're a cohort, yes. But there aren't any limits other than the size of the campsite. So there's a question here that I will take. It's about a scout who um, would have to arrive later on in the week as opposed to coming on Sunday. Yep. Um, as of the guidance right now, uh, any scouts would still have to arrive on Sunday. Um, or, uh, you know, I guess it would be possible I'd have to look into it if they can come on Wednesday, but that's pretty impractical. I'm going to do a little research and, and circle back on that. And um, I know uh, who asked the question, so I, I will get back to you with the specific I hadn't, I hadn't even considered that. Um, and yeah. now the opposite of that is really not as relevant once because if somebody has to leave early they're just leaving it's not really um overly relevant correct yeah um given the change in cohorts can you clarify how we should determine the minimum number of leaders that are needed based on the number of scouts attending but well, it's too deep leadership there's two adults for the troop i mean that's what we it's back to normal for that um now if, if you have 30 kids and you want to try to do two leaders with 30 kids, make sure they're two active leaders. If you bring two people who view Squano as a chance to sit in the chair, you know, we want, I, the, the leaders are not going to have to follow the scouts around the way we had thought they were going to have to, but they are going to have to be two leaders per troop anyway. So that's, that, we're back to that again. Do any of the sign-up dates change? Uh, probably the merit badge date because I have to get those numbers out there, but uh, do we have any plans to change it, Hunter, at council level? No, in terms of like uh, the early bird deadline that we extended to May 28th will remain May 28th, that's this Friday. Yep. And the payment in full bay, which is right around the corner on, on the 31st, will remain the 31st of May. So, so the other question then is if a troop um, finds out next week that they can come and we have an opening, are we going to let them register? I would sure. Say, Absolutely. So you were saying yes again. <laughs> this is awesome. Do all the scouts still need to do the merit badges together as a cohort or can they do them individually? They can do them individually, but within the class, we're going to have some separation. So if a couple of scouts from the same troop take a badge together, which is normally what happens, then they're going to be seated and working together as opposed to intermingling with everybody else. And again, that's today. You know, that might change, I, but I would plan for that to be the situation. If I, if I had to bet, I would plan for that to be the situation. Will the Order of the Arrow have a presence in camp? Um, I would love to say yes, I have to talk to the OA people, but there's no reason we couldn't do a call out. There's no reason because it's just like a bonfire. The unit just has to be cohorted up and off to the side. The elections are held in the campsite. I can't think of a reason. Jack, can you think of a reason why that would not be the case? Right. Absolutely. And Connor Powell is one of my area directors, so I think we can absolutely do it. I, do, I think we should plan on doing OA. That's, that's a yes for me unless something changes that I don't know about. So before, you needed two adults for every 12 scouts. If a unit has 30 scouts, how many adults do we need? So it's, it's two adults. It's it's um, that that was based on on the cohort size and the fact that we needed two deep leadership. So it's now two deep leadership, but it's not limited but to twelve people. So with regard to the pre-camp swim tests, 
Can a unit book multiple times to give their scouts options? And is the payment of $5 cash or check uh, made payable to the camp or the council? Um, I, I can tackle this if you want, Mark. Well, I, my only concern is spreading out. If, if a big troop has five kids that want to take it this day and six kids that want to take it the next day, then we're going to be taking slots possibly away from other people. Um, and you know what, if the whole troop doesn't take, take it ahead of time, that's not a crime that the remaining people can take it on when, on arrival date. As far as the money is concerned, Hunter, that's your world. I'm, I'm just sitting back now. So the swim test is all pre-registration through Black Pug on the council website. So in order to book a time, you have to pay for the time. There you go. Um, so it's all done seamlessly. Um, and, and based on when we did it last fall for uh, make up for scouts that needed a swim test as part of their um, you know rank advancement to first class um, it, we scheduled it as 10 um, slots for every half hour so processing 10 swim checks in a half hour period and that's what it's set up for this time um, so I, we've addressed uh, you know I think the uh, the the tenting arrangement, um, you don't have to be uh, family members to for the two scouts to be in the same tent. Nope. Back to normal. Back to normal. Um, so there's a question about sites for girl units. So just like we would do in a normal year, girl units will have a site. Um, there's not a girl, uh, Scouts BSA girl week. Um, they can come you know, throughout the camp season and it's like we would have had set up previously. Uh, we need to be registered for the early bird special by Friday. Can merit badge choices follow on a different day since the offering changed and um, they don't have the ability to do it? Uh, or they don't have to do it as a cohort anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's there's going to be time. We have to be flexible. We're going to be flexible. Um, and yes, absolutely. Uh, Pre-COVID, an adult leader might bring pizza or cupcakes to troop one night. Could a Wednesday arriving leader bring food or is outside food not allowed because of COVID? I would say that outside food is okay because people go out to eat all the time. For anything that is pre-packaged. So if you brought a box of uh, the individually packaged cupcakes you can buy at a Walmart or a, you know, Shaw's or anything like that, that's good, but you couldn't bring a, like a pizza pie or you know Subway sandwiches or anything like that. It okay. has to be you know manufacturer prepackaged. Okay, which is what the kids like anyways. Yeah, yeah, that's got the most sugar and fat and grease. Uh, I believe we have run down the list. Uh, there's been a few questions about um, the current list of merit badges again. Um, if you go online, there is a list of merit badges on the uh, Scouts BSA resident camp site on the Mayflower BSA um, page. And uh, it has the original merit badge selection from before, but we will include the, the new merit badge selections as a resource when we send out these slides in, uh, in a few days. But it'll, it'll probably be next week when Black Pug is set up for units to be able to go in and enter merit badge choices. So we'll make the resource of what is going to be available. Um, well, available to everybody tonight earlier, but please um, expect that it'll be about mid next week before Black Pug um, is set up, at least at the earliest for units to actually go in and select merit badges. Um, can I just, I just want to throw one thing out there. Um, I know that um, having been the scoutmaster on the receiving end of, of these kind of meetings, um, it, it's not it's not lost, and I know that everybody out there appreciates it. But the amount of work that went into at the council level getting this thing turned around, I, I don't know that Hunter has slept a lot in the last couple of months. You guys, I, I, we all need to appreciate what we were able to turn around, and I know some of it was given to us by. You know, government, but there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of work done on the fly at the at the at the drop of a hat. So um, I think we should all celebrate the fact that you know we're, Scotty's going through a tough time, but this unit pulled it together and we got it done. 
Um, and it's going to be better than we expected, and it might get even better. And you know, we might even have a smiling camp ranger. I don't, I don't, I'm not promising you know miracles, but that might actually happen. And so um, let's uh, let's be excited. Let's get going forward. And I have changed my cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've had a we've had a couple more questions. Um, will units be allowed to choose their campsite, or will it be assigned by the camp staff? It's the site. You, if you register and you go, it's just like back to normal. You choose, you register for the site you got. If, if there's a conflict, uh, we'll work on it. But as it stands now, I don't know of any conflicts because I'd have to see an updated list, and I was waiting to look after tonight. Um, will bakery will bakery items be allowed, or do they need to be prepackaged? Again, that's uh, all the food items would have to be manufacturer prepackaged. So we couldn't, uh, you know, I couldn't bake cookies at home and then bag them all up and bring them in. Uh, you know, I'd have to buy, you know, something from the store that comes from the manufacturer prepackaged and bring them if I wanted to. I do believe there's um, Dutch oven cooking that happens every once in a while at different places, and some upside down cakes that get made in. Dutch ovens and just stuff like that happens, I believe. Plus, by the way, any bakery goods going to be cold by the time you get it in from outside the forest. So, and they just be confiscated by confiscated by the camp director anyway. Absolutely, and his nefarious crew. <laughs> All right, I'm just checking to see if there's any final questions. I'll I'll wait a, like 30 seconds to see if anyone's got any more to throw in there, but we've addressed. I'm saying this is successful because I took my meds and brushed my teeth. That, that has a positive impact. So, Mark, when I answered your question earlier about the OA, so yeah. Hunter McCormick is the staff advisor for the OA, and Mark Vecchione is the advisor for the OA. So, I mean, I myself um, wouldn't be a decision maker. They would discuss it, but my point earlier was that outside visitors could not come in so my uh, mm -hmm. i know you could hear my response but my response did not go out to youtube so um it's as long as you know you guys thought that was something that the camp staff could do uh, besides mm -hmm. election call outs yeah. then maybe that is something i didn't want to give the wrong impression i actually got an answer regarding somebody who's miss, missing the dulcet tones and wisdom coming from jack paul myers so yes. i'm going to address it here um jack's point for those of you who couldn't hear him is um, Mark Fedlio and Hunter are the OA uh, leadership team here, and so as such, I I asked Jack out of um, out of respect for his position within the OA over this time, and it was no disrespect meant to Hunter or Mark, um, but I just asked reflexively because I had not considered the answer previously. Um, OA is going to be available. Hunt, uh, Jack's point was simply that. We wouldn't be able to have a lot, uh, have parent visitors come in for the uh, call out and stuff like that. But we definitely have the staff within camp to do OA. And Connor Power, who is our, um, is going to be our scout craft director this year, is a former uh, lodge chief uh, with a couple of years under his belt. So I'm pretty sure we can pull it off. Uh, yeah, I'm just going through because we've got a few more questions as we've gone through, which is great. Um, so those not vaccinated will need to bring a negative PCR test um, that was done within 72 hours of the time that they arrive at camp. That is correct. Um, and then the question is, will they still need to get tested upon arrival? No. Unless they are symptomatic. Yes, there is no, there is no yeah. arrival, standard arrival testing like we had originally planned. No. Uh, let's see here. Um, so there's a question about how do we register scouts without merit badge choices? The merit badge choices are not a requirement to the registration process. You can bypass all of the badge selections and just do the registering of the youth. Yeah, that's a, that's a new feature of Black Pug. The old system requires you to do it all at once, but Black Pug does not. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all we have uh, that I see oops, for questions. Um, oh, I take that back. Uh, we did have one about, uh, can a unit bring the sealed um, components or ingredients for s'mores, the, you know, the chocolate bars and the graham crackers and the marshmallows, all sealed from the store and then prepare them at their site? Uh, the answer is yes. Yep, the answer is yes. If the camp director is invited. 
if the camp director is invited, of course, and if one person is designated in the unit to prepare them and they're using gloves and all of the standard, you know, uh, basically food prep, uh, food prep, you know, that we teach and serve safe or, you know, just as appropriately the cooking merit badge. Um, so scouts wouldn't be able to do their own this time. They'd have to be prepared, but they can be done as long as the materials are are all, uh, the, the ingredients are all packaged um, and sealed at the time that you come into camp. Okay. Uh, okay, good. We have a couple more questions here as we're talking. Um, do we need to bring vaccination cards as proof of vaccination? Uh, well, the vaccination record should be part of your immunization record. That's the that's part of Part C of the annual health and medical record. Um, that would get listed as an additional item there, um, just like any other immunization or, or vaccination. Yep, and as part of your pre-camp arrival, there's an attestation form that says that you're not doing things that would put you at higher risk. So, mm -hmm. but that's that's part of the modified behavioral quarantine. There is no. Um, draconian you must show it's very much a, an honor system to a certain extent and as hunter said once you're vaccinated it's in your medical record anyway or it should be so uh, okay so um email addresses so that you can reach us if there is anything we'll make sure that in the the distribution of materials um we'll include our email addresses um but they are not hard mark you want to share yours no, <laughs> no, I don't. He wants me to share his. It's, it's written on enough places already. It's just Squano Director at MayflowerBSA.org or McCullochSquanto at gmail.com. It goes to the same place. And and I can be reached at Hunter.McCormick at Scouting.org or Hunter at MayflowerBSA.org. So we're, we're all easy to reach and we try to return information pretty quickly. Um, so there we go. Um, I'm going to make, uh, with Mark's permission, in, in a very largely unrelated uh, remark, very briefly, as I promised um, that I would, before we close out for the evening. Um, and checking one last time before I do that, I see no further questions. But again, continue to keep the questions coming as conversations happen in your units uh, and offline. Send them to us. We, Mark and I do try to respond as promptly as we can, um, but uh, you know, as part of our goal uh, toward transparency and communicating opportunities, um, and I'm gonna, I do this now, uh, you know, anytime that I can uh, speak in front of an audience, um, the Mayflower Council has some uh, vacancies in our professional staff, um, and we are looking to fill uh, those vacancies. Um, so if you know of anybody, and they're, they're pretty much entry-level positions, so uh, they could be, uh, you know, seniors or recently uh, graduated from college, um, but uh, young men and women who have an interest in service, and uh, maybe people that you have worked with in your units, people that you have seen perform, um, you know, stellar in the order of the arrow, in venturing, um, at summer camp. Uh, we are looking to fill the, the vacancies that we have right now, um, and we'd like to do that sooner rather than later. Um, as we, you know, get toward the summer and have time to onboard these people in time for a strong recruitment season when we return to uh, more normal activities this fall. Um, that is a priority of the Mayflower Council. Um, for more information about the opportunities that exist, um, you can uh, contact Rick Riappel. Uh, I'll throw him under the bus here, but but Rick is our, uh, the HR guy from the hiring standpoint, um, and he can provide additional information as well on what opportunities exist. Um, but again, I, I can't emphasize enough that we are looking to fill the vacancies that we have. Um, and there's a lot of young men and women that we see on a regular basis in our units and all the way through the program who would be phenomenal, um, you know, in a career of service in the scouting world. Um, so please uh, give that some thought um, and feel free to share with uh, really with any of us if you'd like. But, you know, it is important to us and, and uh, we wanted to share that with you. Um, I'm going to step away for just a second and be right back. Okay. Somebody's at the door. Be right back. <laughs> All right. Let me check uh, and see if we've got any questions one last time here. Since we're doing, uh, doing well being ahead of time. Um, 
when or where will it be put online about if scouts or leaders will be allowed to check in later than the troop time on Sunday? Um, I will I will communicate that information. Um, if you hear nothing, uh, if you see nothing updated online or nothing included in my communication from the office um, at the very end of this week or the very beginning of next week that has the these resources, this uh, presentation tonight, the slide deck, and all the links, I will include um, an answer to that question um, if there's any change. Right now, the answer is there is no opportunity for a youth, a camper, to come to camp after the unit arrives. If that changes, um, that will be communicated. But as of right now, that is not an option we have available to us. Hey, Hunter, I know you mentioned that there were opp opportunities for employment at the council. Are there still any opportunities at either the camps at Resolute or at Squanto? An excellent question, Jack. So are there any opportunities uh, for camp staff at Squanto and Resolute? Uh, absolutely. We do have opportunities at both camps. Um, and uh, we'd be more than happy to um, to entertain anybody who may be interested in a junior staff position. Um, at Resolute, in particular, we have uh, you know senior leadership positions as area directors. Um, so we would be more than happy. Um, you can send me an email. Uh, Mark can answer anything about Squanto. Yeah. Mark can send me anything um, about Resolute. Um, and uh, I'll connect it to uh, Bernie Bisaccio, our reservation director at Resolute. Uh, but we do have opportunities available. There is a link up on, just go to the normal uh, link up on the Mayfall Council site to apply. Uh, I'll get notified and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, we'll pick up, be staggered as well. No, no, it, well, I mean, we're gonna have it done a little differently, but there's, that's not as effective because it's come in, get your kid and go. You know what I mean? As opposed to come in, answer questions, do a swim test and all that stuff. No, the pickup will not be staggered. Um, there's a question about NYLT. The council is not offering an NYLT program this summer, uh, but we are uh, you know, looking forward to being able to offer a, a full program of NYLT in 2022. And NYLT is now, uh, last I heard, was removed from part of camp. It's now a separate program done outside of the, the first week of camp. So it's not actually going to be part of the camp deal anymore. And it's um, it was something offered to the CITs. They're, offered, they're allowed to take it in the fall, um, but it's not, it's not going to be, at least as far as I know, going to be part of the deal going forward. Okay. Well, um, I know, uh, you know, on behalf of uh, all of the Mayflower Council leadership, you know, especially Mark uh, and I, we are very grateful that you took the time to attend. We hope that this was a much better presentation to hear because Mark and I were much happier <laughs> than us talking, you know, twice a day for the last couple of weeks about these changes. Um, so we were ecstatic to be able to share good news um, because that's what we want. <laughs> Nothing is gained by making things harder. So we are ecstatic um, and really grateful that you've taken the time to hang in there with us, um, participate, and be active members of the Squanto community. And I, you know, just to echo uh, what Hunter just said, I really appreciate all the patience of those who, of you who have hung with us, and those of you who didn't, I completely understand as well. You know, I, I it's not. I probably to say that as a, as a teacher and a scouter, I, I just want the kids outside, you know, whatever it takes to get them moving, get them out of this funk, get them out of this, this depressive lockdown we've been under, wherever they go, I want them outside. So, you know, thank you for all you did this year to keep scouting going. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for supporting us. And I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of you at Squano. I better get a handshake. Um, I better get an elbow bump, whatever you're comfortable with. I don't care, but I better get to see all of you. And I, I hope that we get to, to smile and look back at this and say, we made it because we did. We're going to, we're going to kick some butt this year and have a good time. And I see one more question that popped up, which is good. You know, I have to start talking so much because I said, keep, keep it coming. coming. <laughs> So I know some of the parents of young scouts are gonna ask on Sunday drop off, can the parents go to the campsite with their scout or is it still say goodbye in the parking lot? Uh, 
I don't know. I, in, in my mind, I think it's say goodbye in the parking lot. Um, yep. But I completely understand the sentiment. I think we're going to have to say it's, it's say goodbye in the parking lot. Um, That's what it is. Okay. So there's your answer. <laughs> Keep it simple. Okay. Well, again, thank you for participating and attending tonight. We will have um, all of the resources out in a few days. Um, again, I would anticipate having this done no later than this Friday, but uh, if it takes until Tuesday to finalize everything and package it up with a bow and get it out to you, um, it may take that time. But, uh, and again, continue to keep the questions coming. Uh, we love the questions. We want to give you as much information as possible as quickly as we can. I mean, if we didn't address anything sufficiently tonight, let us know and we will do so. Um, so with that, um, have a great evening. Will there be a June session? Will there be another one um, of these in June? Is there a plan? Yeah. I, 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 well, I don't know yet. I would su suggest that if more guidance is necessary, okay. then we'll have one. But I don't want to tell people that they have to hear this again in June. Okay, okay. More good news. So, is that, is that, say it again? If the information is the same. Yeah, if we get more changes, then we'll have another session. Okay. Um, uh, for those of you who can't hear Jack, Jack brought up the valid point. Is there going to be one of these in June? Um, at this point, we have no intent to have one. Um, but if some major changes happen, if something else comes along from the government that, we, that allows us to do or forces us to do something different, then we'll definitely have a meeting to convey that. But I can't see a need for one right now. I received an email question. Will there be any leadership training opportunities? Um, I'm in the, in the adults in camp. Have we historically offered youth leadership training opportunities during a standard week of program? Um, well, other than the MLT, no. Um, adult, we, uh, adult training we have offered in the past. We've done Scoutmaster Basics. We've done first aid, we've done that kind of stuff, but unless it can be done within camp, by the staff I have in camp, we can't have visitors in. Hmm. So if I can arrange it, we'll, we'll let you know at the Monday meetings. Um, and if we can do it, we'll, we'll get the word out as soon as possible. Um, if my waterfront director has the ability and has the time, then maybe we do the safety float thing down at the waterfront. Um, but depending on med staff, I don't think we can do first aid. Um, and Scoutmaster Basic would require somebody coming in from outside, so I don't think we can offer that one this year. Correct. Okay, question about medical form part B, the annual health and medical record. Does Massachusetts require a medical provider's signature for medication? Excuse me. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think the medication is already. If it's if the medication is prescribed by a physician, then you have to have you have the prescription. We just need it delivered in a blister pack or in a sealed container, and that's the norm anyway. So I don't think that there needs to be a signature that yes, this child is taking. Adderall or Ritalin or whatever. I, I, I don't think that uh, outside of the fact that the physician has already given the prescription signature, I don't think there is another additional law there that I know of. Is Am I missing something? Uh, not to my knowledge. I'll, I'll confirm that. If you hear nothing from me, then you're good because all the medications that are listed, um, you know, they that's why Part C has, that document has to be signed. No attachments, no stapled copies of immunizations. As the, the the doctor is supposed to be reviewing the entirety of, of parts B and C yeah. when they stand off on it, um, that's why that signature has to actually be applied by the physician onto the annual health and medical record itself, and attachments aren't accepted because if you attach an attachment with a the signature, there's no guarantee the physician actually saw the document. Um, Okay, so, okay, a couple more questions, Mark. So in the past, um, camp has offered YPT training for any adults that wanted it in the leaders room. Is there any plans to do that this year? Um, I don't know of them because we can't bring anybody in. However, if I can arrange it, um, maybe we could have the hotspots available 
in the Reynolds room, somebody could do the self-guided one um, via, during some of their downtime. Uh, but yes. Go ahead. As long as we did it outside and it was socially distanced uh, with the people that you have on your team, Mark, I don't see why not. Yeah, they could sit on, uh, I said the Reynolds room, sorry, I meant the dining hall porches. They could sit there and do it, um, but I can't bring anybody in to teach anything this year. Uh, is are we planning on offering the leaders morning meetings now yes but they'll be sitting outside and sitting with the leaders in their group which is what they do anyway mm -hmm. so we just have to keep them to our best ability keep them separated and also by the way uh, this is going to sound awkward and um accusatory and i don't mean it like this uh, but for those of you who are coming to camp there's a whole bunch of 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds who are going to be working for me. And if they are in a position to have to tell people to separate or abide by the three foot distance or anything like that, I'm really going to need your support with the people in your troop, adults and children. If it's going to be hard for a 16 year old to say, hey, could you please tell your kids to, to follow the rules? It's going to be hard for them to walk up to you and do that. And I would just really appreciate your support when it comes to that kind of stuff that you back up my staff and say that's, that's the right way to do it. So that would that would just be something I would ask in advance. Be prepared to back up the staff because they're not doing it out of a power struggle. They're doing what they've been asked to do. So please. And thank you. I suspect everybody will anyway. There was a note here that in the past, over the counter permission section, Part C basically needed to be signed and other years not. And we understand that that has, depending on who you've asked and where you've gone, that there's been some inconsistency in applying those guidelines. But but uh, we can be very clear here that anybody, youth or adult who comes without a signature in Part C will not be allowed to enter camp. So um, please be sure that that part of the annual health and medical record is signed directly uh, and not any attachments to that document. Uh, let's see, we, I think we addressed this question, but will there be more openings for sites now that cohorts are larger? Yes. Yep. Yep. I, the numbers that I, I can't give you a number of how many troops backed out as of the April news. So I, I don't have a specific number, but you know, there is some room uh, out there. There's, and now that you have the flexibility of swapping people out, hopefully that there's a little bit more flexibility for your team. Um, but yes, there is some room out there. So please come and join us. Absolutely. And now I believe that I've gotten all the last batch of questions. I'm just checking all the, checking my cell phone. Checking the, checking everywhere here, email. I think we're good.